When Mexican authorities arrested El Chapo for the third time and extradited him to the US, they celebrated one minute too early. They thought the days of the notorious Sinaloa cartel and its unspeakable violence were finally over. But El Chapo has a big family, and his sons are more than prepared to take over the business. This became all too clear in 2019. El Chapo's sons will do anything to escape prison. And when Ovidio Guzman was arrested, all hell broke loose. Sinaloa became a war zone. Brutal violence is far from over in Mexico. Over the last few years, the death rate in Mexico has been at an all-time high. The war between the Sinaloa and the Jalisco New Generation cartel is turning cities into ghost towns and terrorizing millions of people. How big a role do El Chapo's sons have in it? And what made Ovidio Guzman's arrest so brutal? Well, we'll explore these questions and many more in today's video. Have you ever been denied a school trip because your parents were in prison? I know, it almost sounds made up, but this was the life of Ovidio Guzman Lopez growing up. He was born on March 29, 1990, the son of Joaquin Guzman, or El Chapo, and his second wife. El Chapo wasn't just a ruthless kingpin, he was also a family man and had at least 10 children. So Ovidio grew up with a large family filled with siblings and half-siblings, all fiercely protecting each other but they were also exposed to their father's dirty business from a very young age. Ovidio's older brothers, Ivan and Jesus, began doing errands for the Sinaloa cartel as children. When Ovidio was five, his parents enrolled him at Colegio CEYCA, or the Adusco Center for Education and Culture. This was a private Catholic school held by the Legionaries of Christ. But Ovidio was already tainted as far as his peers and teachers were concerned. Two years before, in 1993, El Chapo was arrested for the first time and sentenced to 20 years in prison for drug trafficking and bribes. It would be bribes that helped him escape in a laundry cart in 2001, too. Everyone at Ovidio's school knew his dad was in prison, and everyone had heard of El Chapo. He was a ruthless criminal who used violence as a means to an end with ease. His teacher and classmates' parents were afraid of the Guzman family. The kids were warned to stay away from him. Who knows what would happen if a child would annoy El Chapo's child? So Ovidio was excluded from all social events, like kids' birthday parties or school trips. Once the school organized a trip to Disney World, this was a big thing and the kids were very excited about it. Ovidio was too, but he was never invited. He found out from his schoolmates who were talking about the trip all the time. When Ovidio's mother found out, she offered the school to pay for everyone's room in exchange for Ovidio's invitation, but the school declined. Imagine the leverage the Sinaloa cartel would have over the head teacher if they accepted. So after Ovidio finished sixth grade and got a school picture taken, he dropped out of school for good. The only option for him was a life of crime. Like the rest of El Chapo's sons, Ovidio became engulfed in his father's work from a young age. By the time he was 18, he had an important role in both the production and trafficking of narcotics. In 2012, Ovidio and his older brother, Ivan, were put on a do not deal list by the United States Treasury Department. Their American assets were frozen and the brothers were forbidden from making deals with the American citizens. And two years later, El Chapo was finally arrested in Mexico. He'd been on the run for 13 years. Perhaps he didn't believe it at the time. This was the beginning of the end for El Chapo. In 2015, he organized his second prison escape by digging a tunnel under his prison cell shower, the only place without security cameras. But less than a year later, he was arrested and extradited to the US. No amount of money, top lawyers, or intimidation would get him out of the ADX Florence Federal Prison. It's the highest security prison in the US, and the worst of the worst are held there in solitary confinement 23 hours a day. Perhaps the terrified look on El Chapo's face was warranted. In July 2019, he was sentenced to life in prison. He will also have to pay over $12 billion in forfeits. The DEA and the Mexican authorities were very happy. They'd been hunting El Chapo for years, and usually, when you take out a kingpin, it's easier to reduce their cartel to ashes. But by 2016, El Chapo had taught his sons to be ruthless, cunning, and brutal. They were ready to take over his father's business. Judy, they are known as Los Chapitos, the four most trusted sons of the world's most notorious drug kingpin. As the I-Team has reported for several years, federal drug investigators here in Chicago consider El Chapo's sons in charge of the Sinaloa cartel that remains this area's largest trafficker of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamines. Even though Ovidio, aka El Ratan, is one of the younger Chapitos, he never had a problem with senseless violence. 
They now say this drug lord, nicknamed the Mouse, has ordered the murders of informants, a rival drug trafficker, and a popular Mexican singer who refused to perform at his wedding. Maybe he's taking rejection extra hard after his experience at school, but murder is hardly a solution. Ovidio, Ivan, and Jesus expanded El Chapo's business by building new, more efficient labs and extending the trafficking routes to the whole world. They also bought huge quantities of ephedra from Argentina. This is the ingredient used in making meth. Of course, the DEA wasn't going to let this slide. They charged Ovidio with conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine, white powder, and weed to the United States. Ovidio and Ivan were just preparing for a massive shipment, five kilograms of coke, a ton of cannabis, and 500 grams of meth. In October 2019, three months after El Chapo received his life sentence, the DEA led a huge movement against Ovidio Guzman in collaboration with the Mexican military. The plan was simple. Find Ovidio, arrest him, and extradite him to the U.S. He was to face the same fate as his father. But it wasn't that simple, not by a long shot. Ovidio and Ivan would turn Sinaloa into a bloody war zone. On October 17th, the Mexican authorities localized both brothers. First, they went after Ivan, but he was one minute quicker than the military. He escaped and rallied up to his army, hundreds of Sicarios armed to their teeth. In the early hours of the morning, the military surrounded Ovidio's house. Ovidio initially started shooting at the officers. Of course, the officers fired back, and Ovidio soon realized he was heavily outnumbered, so he came out with his hands up. <laughs> But news of his arrest traveled fast. Within moments, Ivan's giant Sicario army and other thousands of Sinaloa soldiers descended upon the Mexican military. Shockingly, it was Ovidio who seemed to try to stop it, but his efforts were too late. It was complete bloodshed. The Sicarios released cartel prisoners, set fire to cars to block important roads, and invaded the local airport. Trade and travel were completely stopped in the Sinaloa region for hours. Seven officers and one civilian were killed and the civilians that survived were instructed to hide in their homes. The cartels were imposing a curfew on the town until Ovidio would be released. Sadly, it worked. President Andreas Manuel López Abrador ordered Ovidio's immediate release to prevent further loss of life. This sends the wrong message, that the authorities are easily intimidated and the cartel is in control. According to Falco Ernst, a senior analyst for the International Crisis Group in Mexico, who explained that Ovidio Lopez Guzman's release set a terrible precedent and communicated a message that the state, including the army, could be blackmailed and was not in control. President Abrador explained his decision, but the cartel had already declared war. It sounds a lot like Pablo Escobar's old saying, plata o plomo, except a bribe or a bullet. Either way, the cartel gets its way, but it shouldn't be like that in this century. By 2022, there was a $5 million reward for the captures of Ovidio and Ivan, and a $15 million reward for the arrest of El Mayo, the other leader of the Sinaloa cartel. However, this didn't mean much to Los Chapitos. They continued to run production and oversee trafficking, and they even increased El Chapo's cartel all the while the DEA was tracking their every movement and planning a much more complex and better organized raid. In early January 2023, 200 special forces conducted a joint operation and arrested Ovidio Guzman for a second time. The Mexican president has defended the military operation that captured a drug cartel leader, Ovidio Guzman, son of jailed drug trafficker El Chapo. Violence erupted in Culiacan, a stronghold of the cartel. At least 19 members of the Sinaloa cartel and 10 members of the military were killed. That's right, 29 people died in just a few minutes. The Sinaloa cartel reacted with even more brutality than in 2019. They even went into the Coyoacan airport and shot at civilian planes. These criminal organizations shot with weapons at aircraft from the Mexican Air Force and from commercial airlines and at the international Coyoacan airport facilities. Nevertheless, they did not achieve their goal of rescuing the alleged offender because we neutralized him. In the eyes of the cartel, this was a simple tit for tat. But Ovidio was arrested anyway, and dozens of people died in a disproportionate act of revenge. Mexico is a constant war zone thanks to the war on drugs and a vicious Guzman family. Ovidio was taken to the military helicopter and transported to the Altiplano prison, the same high security prison in Mexico that his father had once escaped from. But now, the Altiplano prison has a much stronger security. It's highly unlikely Ovidio will ever get out. President Obrador has once again defended the operation. This time, it seemed like he changed his mind. 
it was worth a few casualties to close an entire chunk of the Sinaloa cartel. We regret the loss of lives of those who died while carrying out their jobs. We also regret other losses. But even with Obadillo behind bars, the war is far from over. His arrest was an incentive for the Sinaloa cartel to bring even more chaos and destruction on the Sinaloa region. Violence broke out across the state following the arrest of one of the leaders of an infamous criminal gang. Ovidio Guzman Lopez is the son of the notorious drug lord dubbed El Chapo. The arrest comes just days before US President Joe Biden is due to visit Mexico for a summit next week. That's right, and this is not a coincidence. According to CNN, Ovidio's arrest was also a way for the Mexican government to show the US that they are now in control. They will not be bribed or intimidated by the cartels anymore. As of January 2023, Mexican authorities plan to extradite Ovidio Guzman to the US. It's likely that he will face a similar fate as El Chapo. But if he's thrown inside the Florence Supermax prison, it won't be a happy family reunion. Florence inmates spend 23 hours in solitary confinement, and their free hour is also spent alone in the presence of correctional officers. Prisoners even eat alone except for the last three years of their sentence. El Chapo will never get this privilege as he's serving a life sentence. The question is, will his son? Hey, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on El Chapo's sons? Let us know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.